Welcome back to another video and it has been a while since we've done a video. What I have here is a template that I made in SketchUp. And so uh, I noticed whenever I put this template together that there's one small deviation. This is a little bit smaller than what it shows it's gonna be in SketchUp. My SketchUp plan is for 18 and a half inches. And this here comes in at like eight, 17 and three quarters. So it, it's like it's shrunken. I've measured the dots and they're all off by the same amount. I mean, they're still in line, but they are still off just a little bit. So I'm gonna make this work, I think. I think I'm gonna make this work. I'll make a small adjustment uh, when I, the way I center this to make my template. And I think this will work. Another way you can do is if you've seen Jay Bates' video, he makes a video, this is like five or six years ago, a long time ago, a video of, of him making the same type of template with just measuring it out on his wood and not using a template. But I'm gonna try using this one and we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna bring you guys in closer and let's see if I can zoom in. You can see those marks there. Again, like I said, this is off by about three quarters of an inch. The whole thing is, it's still square, corner to corner it's square, but it's a little bit shorter. So like I said, it's gonna be okay. It's, uh, it'll, I'm gonna make this work. If you guys wanna print this, I'll have a link to a free template like this where you'll have to trim the edges and you gotta actually trim each page in order to make this fit together correctly. Um, or you can go check out Jay Bake's video or you can just kinda wing it on your own. But let's get to the table saw and cut our plywood right there to those final dimensions. So as I stated earlier, my template here that I printed is actually three quarters of an inch from being the, the correct size. So I'm gonna make a mark on each side of, the, side of this board and move out and make a mark three eighths inch, inches, three eighths of an inch from, from our outside edge. I'll do that on all four corners for both directions. And then what I'm gonna do after this as I mark these 3 8 inches all the way around is I'll come back and put some packing tape on my paper here and I'll actually tape it down to the, the workbench here and this will be for two reasons one is because I'm fixing to cut this paper and I don't want it to tear and two is if I tape it with the packing if I tape it to the workbench then the paper won't move at all and I'm gonna do this for all four sides again and have uh, the, the tape go right over where I'm gonna make this cut So now that I've got all the paper, the excess paper removed, I'm going to come back and I'm going to use some spray adhesive and I'm going to spray this to the, uh, the board that I cut on the table saw earlier. I have a piece of wood on here to help. I've got it squared where it needs to be at, but that board is going to help hold it in place. Since this is just paper, it's really not going to be, have any reason to move. So I'm going to spray one half, put it down and make sure it lines up on the edges. And then I'll move around and I'll raise up the, move the board to the other side and do the same thing to help put this in place. So the next step is to come in here with our awl and mark all of these holes. So I just finished marking all the dots and you may be wondering what's the point of marking these dots and what are we doing on this? Well I have a adapter that goes on my plunge router where this has uh, got a little collar on it. We'll be able to stick it in this hole and we'll be able to use this as a template to make another board. So we're kind of like making a board so that we can make more boards in the future. So we have our collar for the plunge router and then we have a cove bit or round bit or this could be for marbles, whatever you want to call it. That We'll use that in our plunge router when we actually make the board. But we need to make this template first. So now that I got all the holes marked, we're going to go to the drill press. And we're going to drill all of these holes except for one, which is the center one, which my drill press will not get to. And I'll do that one by hand. If you don't have a drill press, as I'm doing this one by hand, you could do actually all of these by hand. One thing I will add is I'm using a, I'll have links in the description to all the products I'm using today. But this is a, going to be a five, inch in, five eighths inch hole. I've already 
drilled test holes to make sure this will fit in there. And while it is a very tight, snug fit, it does fit in there. Okay, and then going, what will plunge in that is going to be a half inch bit. So there'll be an eighth inch clearance for this plunger router bit to go through here and go into the material. So this will be, there's enough clearance there, so we'll be able to use both of these. Um, if you don't have these as your, at your disposal or you have something different, then you wanna make sure you drill your holes to match what you have for your collar at home that you're gonna to use to make this. Again, this is a template, so you're using this to set up to make boards in the future. I was wrong, there was actually five holes I could not reach with my drill press. Perfect, and there is some blowout in the back. We'll sand this up and, and scratch off all that blowout there so it doesn't look so bad. But it didn't really matter. The back, this is, like I said, this is a template so you can make more than one of these. So I decided after I finished the board that I was gonna come back and drill some holes in a piece of scrap wood right here and that's what I'm doing. And I'm gonna see about using a round over bit on these holes and see how it in impacts using this collar. So what I'm doing is drilling five holes here to give me five spots to try it out on and make sure that it looks good after i went back and used the the round over the smallest round over bit i had the collar fit in there great so i went ahead and and i'm going to go ahead and do this add this round over to all the holes on the template that's much easier to go in and it comes out much easier as well so i think i'm going to go ahead and go to my board and round over all of those holes on there So a couple things we're gonna do here. First, I've set my depth stop to this little guy right here with how deep we want it to go. So now, when we plunge, that it'll bottom out right there, and it won't let me go any deeper with my router. I've got some double-sided tape here. This is carpet tape. And I'm gonna cut it into some small pieces because it doesn't take a lot of this. So we'll just take this, and we'll just stick it down right there. I don't know that you need carpet tape. This is probably a little bit of overkill, but it's hard to find double-sided tape anywhere. So now I got those on there. I'm gonna pull these off and I'm gonna turn this over. And I've already cut, I cut uh, two boards at the same time when I did this pattern. So now we're gonna turn this over. And we're gonna see if we can line it up here. Make sure it's good. It's good all the way around. So now we're ready to go ahead and plunge cut all these holes. So now I want to show you as I start making the first holes on the first board that I've ever made. Making this template really doesn't add a lot of time because if you don't make the template then you have to still make the holes in the board. So this is going to show you how quickly you can make these holes in a board using the template. And I guess my point by saying that is, is that if you want to go ahead and make a template, you're not going to spend a lot of extra time making a template in case you do want to make one of these in the future. Overall, I knocked this board out in about little, 4 minutes and 40 seconds. It really did not take long to get the whole thing done. So one of the biggest mistakes I think uh, young woodworkers make, and I've done this myself on projects I've made on this channel is they don't think about possibly making another a one-off. They think every project's a one-off, meaning that you're only gonna make one of these. So when you make a template like this, this means that you can duplicate this very easily. So it took probably, if I count SketchUp time, it probably took about two to three hours to make this template here. And then to make the first board, it probably took another, which it has a border on it, it probably took another hour and a half, counting finishing it. But now, if I want to make one, I can knock one of these out, have all the holes done after it's cut. So I've got a stack cut here. And now I'm gonna make all of these into Wahoo boards. And I should be able to do this in probably an hour. Now, this is 10 boards, I should be able to knock out 10 boards in about an hour with this template here. So that, that's one of the things when I say that a mistake that young woodworkers make 
is they don't think about possibly making more of these in the future. And I've done that too, especially with the blanket ladder. I now have a pattern for that, but uh, I thought I would never make another blanket ladder again. And I've probably made more blanket ladders than any other project I've made. So after cutting a couple boards, I decided it would be better to go ahead and add some spray finish to the bottom and top of this board. So what I'm doing here is going back and putting several coats on the bottom and several coats on the top to give it a nice finish for the pat for the template. This will allow the tape to come off easier and allow me to be able to position it a little bit easier. So I've got several coats of uh, spray, uh, clear spray, whatever, whatever this stuff is called, uh, on this thing to help protect it. Overall, this thing is done and it looks good. Um, so I'm gonna call this video complete. My next video is gonna be me, like I showed you a few shots of me using this in the video today, but my next video is gonna show me using this to make a wahoo board and I think it's in size where it's at. It's already completed, but we'll show uh, how I make it. I actually end up putting a border around it. It's really cool, um, but you'll have to check out the next video for that one. If this happens to be your first video, make sure you click the subscribe button so you can know when that Wahoo board comes out and you can hear, see more videos I have like this one and other videos I have coming out soon. It's good to be back. It's been a crazy, uh, busy time uh, the last about year and a half, but I'm glad to be back uploading videos and back in the shop doing some work. So thanks again for watching, and as always, y'all will see me next time. Here's some bonus footage. I'm showing myself as I, as I route out three more boards here. This really does show you how quickly you can knock out these boards. Don't forget to look down below for the link to my website. There's a free template on my website and you can download it there. It's the same one that I used in the video. Overall, to route these three boards, it took less than 15 minutes, so I think it's definitely worth making a template if you plan on making these in the future.